What's up? We're starting a vlog. This vlog is going to be a Kayla recommends vlog. Essentially, I was watching one of her videos actually a while back now and she read this book and she was like, you know what? This is this would be a perfect pairing with this book. And so I was like, okay, sure. I'll read those. Sounds good. Let's do it. Here's what she said. But like comparing this to How Have You Go in the Dark, this is just such a good pairing. I feel like if you enjoyed one, you would enjoy the other. And it's funny because, well, it's not funny. Proven by evidence that my friend Adriana, the reason I'm reading out there is because of her. And we both also loved How High We Go in the Dark this year. So definitely recommend them both in tandem. And I hope it continues to be incredible. I can't see why it wouldn't be. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna be reading. I'm gonna be reading How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. I hope I said that right. And I'm gonna be reading Out There by Kate Folk. I know Out There is a short story collection. I don't know if How High We Go in the Dark is. I've heard a lot of people saying great things about How High We Go in the Dark. And then Out There by Kate Folk, I have heard that this one is kind of like Black Mirror. Those are two words that you can say and I'll be like, yes, okay. If it's like Black Mirror, that is all, it's like how to get me to read a book in two words. Black Mirror, that's it. Anyway, so yeah, I've started it. I am 30% in right now. So my husband, hello. Was that bread in your car? Yes. I knew we got wheat bread. I was like, what? I thought we got wheat bread. Anyway, I'm about 30% into this book right now. And so far it's good. There's already been like four, four short stories. First one I really liked. There were a couple in there that were just not long enough. You know, sometimes they're just not long enough and you feel like you didn't get what you wanted out of it. When people can do that right, short stories, especially horror-ish type stories, and give you that affectation within just a short amount of time, love it love it um so there's one story that did do that that i really liked so and now i'm t now i'm onto a different one i don't know i don't read a whole lot of anthologies i don't know how this is gonna go but i will check back in with you guys in a little bit what are you some kind of dog savant why did you leave your toy like that you weirdo <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself what do you have to say for yourself child hmm hmm Okay. The day has finally come. I woke being smothered by a pillow. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not funny. That's not funny, Elizabeth. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Listen, my husband likes to say that I hog the bed. This is factually untrue. He hogs the bed. And he's constantly, like, he has a support pillow. Like, there's one that he lays on, then there's, like, a support pillow. And he's constantly like, by the time we wake up, he's like this. Like if this screen is our bed, he goes to bed like this, he wakes up like this or like this, one or the other. This morning he rolled over and attempted to get comfortable by placing his pillow on my goddamn face. And then he said, his neck hurt today when he woke up. I'm sorry, did you hurt your neck in your attempt to smother me in my sleep? I don't feel sorry for you. Mm -mm. No, no sir. This was an accident, of course. <laughs> I wouldn't be here if he was actually trying to smother me. <laughs> not a great way to wake up. I do not recommend it, zero out of 10. So I am still reading out there. I'm like 60% into it right now. There's a few stories that I like. There's a few that I don't. What's happening? <sighs> Not all of the stories are like Black Mirror. They're all weird, but they're not all like techno futuristic kind of stuff, which is what I expect from Black Mirror type stuff. There's one that's that was really good that's called The Bone Ward. And it's basically these people that have this, I don't know if it's a disease or what it is, but at nighttime, your bones turn to mush. And so they have to stay in this special ward for people like them so that they can keep them alive. And it's just basic human things that are happening. Like there's this, there's only one chick, one girl, I shouldn't call her a chick, and there's a bunch of guys. And so she kind of likes having all of the attention from all the guys. It's kind of like her ward. And she's dating one of them. And then this other girl comes in with this bone disease and she's like beautiful and 
all the guys are like, ooh, who's this new girl? And so she gets really jealous and she behaves in ways that she probably shouldn't. So it's like normal human emotion behavioral thing, but set in this like really interesting non-existent setting where your bones literally melt at night. Just weird, weird shit. There's some that are just too short, just too short to even get any kind of connection to or get anything from. There's one called Doe Eyes about this woman who her husband left her and cheated on her and she just wants his attention and she lives in these woods where there's always a bunch of hunters so she sets out to try to get shot because she thinks that he'll sympathize with her if she gets shot and to the point where she like ends up trying to hire somebody to shoot her. Yeah, and the one I'm reading right now is called Moist House, about this guy that tricked into living in this house for free, but the house has to stay moist. Like, he has to put lotion on all the walls constantly, and now he's connected to it. And if he doesn't continue to put lotion on the on the house walls, then he starts to dry up too. So, yeah, that's interesting. That's one of the better ones. It's a little longer. So anyway, we'll see. I'm doing this cool thing later on. I'm probably gonna right now go to the library. How How We Are in the Dark just came in on hold. So I'm gonna pick that up. I might stop by my little free library that I like going to to see what they have now. And then later on tonight, I'm doing like a paint with a twist, I think it's called thing. And I'm gonna paint Denver. So that should be fun. And I will check in with you when I finish this look. Okay, so I finished out there by Kate Volk. Kayla had mentioned that there there are these stories in there about blots. And there are two stories in there about this. And it's in this world where these companies have these like robots that look like really handsome, attractive men. They send them out into society. And these men hook unsuspecting women and then they steal their their data. Data, data. You know, clear out their bank accounts, whatever. So it's like this big scam. And one of the stories is being told at the point where nobody knows about it and you get this like person's experience with them, how this guy's really weird, but you know, she's kind of just going with the flow and then she finds out what he is and then things go from there. And then there's another story after the fact, like when everybody knows what blots are, blots have gotten better because they're less perfect. So they are seemingly more human, harder to tell apart from men, and they're integrated into society, etc. The blots were really fascinating. I thought, I wish all of the stories in this book were set in that world. I think that would have been cool. There were a couple of the stories that I really liked, but a lot of them just felt like ideas. Like not even like full stories, just like ideas that if they had been kind of delved into could each be their own book, but they felt unfinished. A lot of the endings were just this kind of like vaguely threatening ending, not even like a twist, but like just vaguely threatening, which to some extent kind of makes you think about what it could be. But I wish there was just a little bit more information to leave you with that sense of dread that I think that's what it was going for, that like sense of dread, but I don't think it quite accomplished that. Overall, I thought it was just fine. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it. I don't know that, like I don't read a whole lot of anthologies and this definitely doesn't make me, it doesn't give me a lot of hope as far as like anthologies go. Cause it's weird cause I love novellas. And I guess even a novella is longer than probably the longest story in here. But it's hard to do. It's hard to put all um, enough information into a story and have it be that short and have it still be effective. So yeah, a couple of them were really good, but a lot of them were just too short. Anyway, so I have now started How High We Go in the Dark. This is by Sequoia Nagamatsu, and he is a Japanese American, but he grew up in America, I believe. I'm about 30% into this one right now, but I really don't know how to feel about it. Like the whole, it took me a while to get in, to even get into it. And even at, even now I don't know that I'm into it. Even now I don't even really know what it's about. I still have not even read the, maybe I should read the synopsis. Okay, yeah, it's not really giving me much more than I thought it was. Um, This is a pandemic book. Didn't know that. Didn't know that going in. Wish I had been prepared for that. Um, There's a plague. 
that is going, just making its way across the world. And it's set in 2030. Yeah, 2030. The book opens up and there's this guy, this archaeologist who is in Siberia. His daughter has just died. I think she was a researcher in Siberia and they found this body of this woman who was like 30,000 years old. And she was part Neanderthal and part like starfish. Like her DNA had this really weird thing where she would like regrow body parts and stuff. That was really strange. And as they're unearthing this, they let loose this like airborne pathogen that was under the ice that had melted. And this is like in the midst of climate change gone awry. Like in this year, in this setting, in this, you know, book, Animals are extinct all over the place. It's very much a like dystopian future where climate change it has rocked our world. Then this plague gets let loose and then we're just following all of these different people who are affected by this. There's one part where we're following this comedian who gets offered a job as kind of a clown in this amusement park that is a euthanasia amusement park that's made for children who are suffering with this plague to put them out of their misery. So they basically send them there thinking that they're at this amusement park and they go on this roller coaster and that's their final ride. The parents take them there so they don't have to like die in a hospital and you know a lot of them don't know what's going on. There's this other part too where these people are in the dark which I assume is where the title comes from how high we go in the dark and they're like can't see each other but they're in the dark and I don't know if they're like in heaven or or you know limbo or something like that or if they're in just like this weird state of consciousness because they are infected by the plague. I have no idea but the plague what it does it comes from that woman's DNA where she she her body can reshape itself and regrow and essentially it's it tricks your cells into thinking that they are from some other part of the body so like your heart will turn into a brain or your brain will turn into a liver or whatever so it affects people differently and it's just like really really bad it's definitely giving me sea of tranquility vibes which I really loved that one I don't know I don't know what I was expecting with this but I'm not super into it right now. I think it could get really interesting and I'm hoping that it does. Um, but as of right now, I'm just kind of sitting in it. So yeah. Y'all. I'm suffering. I'm suffering. <laughs> Where are this book? Oh man. It's depressing. It's so, so depressed. Oh look, there's Denver's butt. That makes me feel better. Oh. Yeah, it's so depressing. Did not know what I was getting into reading this one. Full on pandemic. This is the most pandemic-y book I've read since COVID started. And so now I'm like, like I needed to prepare myself for this. I don't know why I thought this was going to be like, just like really flowery, futuristic poetry style prose with maybe short stories. It is... <sighs> It is all connected. We're following generations and generations before, during, and after the plague. And I keep thinking, what did I like about Sea of Tranquility that it's not in this? And I think, I think what the difference is, Sea of Tranquility, there was that like mystery element, that quote, maybe supernatural, maybe not element that you have to figure out that keeps you interested in each different perspective. And also it was a lot shorter. I feel like this book is taking me like a fucking year to finish because I'm not interested in it. It's dragging and it's depressing. It's not like, it's not sad in a beautiful way like Migrations was or, you know, like some kind of like unrequited love scenario. It's sad in a digging, worming way that leaves you with this sense of dread. It's like fucking heavy, bro. I said bro, I'm sorry. But it is. I don't like it. I have now finished How High We Go in the Dark. I have some thoughts. Unfortunately, I did not love this. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why? I, I'm so confused because there are so many people who I follow who I'm, and who I trust, who I've not, not trust, but like who I have similar tastes to, who have really enjoyed this book. And now I'm just confused. Now I'm just confused. I don't understand why. I don't get it. 
This really reminded me of the Sea of Tranquility, but it didn't do the things that I loved about the Sea of Tranquility. It was a little bit too long. It's not even that long. It's like 300 pages, if that. It was not succinct. We're following all these people and I get like the connection, although I probably missed a few of the connections. It was just so heavy and depressing. I don't think, I haven't read another pandemic book that was this depressing. In fact, I haven't read that many, but I've read a lot that have mentioned the pandemic, but not focused on a plague. A plague. We're following this plague before, during, and after over generations of people and families and how they are affected by it and all of these things to the point where currency becomes funerary tokens, like funeral tokens. And like the funeral business is the highest, most successful business in all of the land and in the world. I just thought it was so gloomy and doomy and I did not even want to finish this. If I hadn't been vlogging this, I would have, I would have just put it down. The writing wasn't especially beautiful. There wasn't something at the beginning that I knew that was going to happen that I was like looking forward to it. I don't really understand the ending of this. I don't understand the connection to the title. There's one chapter in here that I feel like had a connection to the title, but I don't understand how that ties in. I think maybe it just went over my head. I don't know, but I did not love this. I'm really sorry, Kayla. <laughs> I'm sorry I did not love this but out of these two I definitely liked out there more why are these so shiny I wish that this one was longer I wish that each of these stories in here were their own full book I think this this more overall is just a book of ideas for stories that feels unfinished the universe is the way Kate folks mind works I absolutely love love that and some of these stories I thought were fantastic. I just wish they were delved into deeper. And then I just didn't like how some of them ended on this just like vaguely threatening ending that had no answers. I, I don't know. It, I wanted it to be darker, I guess, in some points. Um, but there were other things that I just really, really loved about this. As far as short story collections go, I think I have to give it three stars because I didn't love a lot of the stories, but I did love a lot of the stories. I don't know. It's really hard to rate, but I think I'm going to give it th maybe 3.5 stars. And if that's the case, I'll round, I'll round up on Goodreads and give it a four on Goodreads. But I do appreciate this one. I did enjoy this and I had fun with it. This one, not so much. Not so much. This is, I guess, kind of told in short stories, um, but it's all like connected. So you feel like this is all the same world, you know, it's just different perspectives. But even though they are like kind of short stories, it's all the same story. So I didn't really consider this one as like an anthology. It felt just like one story written in a unique way. I guess I just don't understand what this book is trying to do. I don't understand what it's trying to say. Other than like, what's the point? <laughs> don't read this book if you're depressed. If you have depression, don't read this. I don't think it's healthy. I would not I wouldn't suggest that as far as pairing these two together I get it I get I get how they can be paired together um they're both kind of futuristic dystopias but I don't want it to, I need something to root for I need something to root for this was just hopeless I felt like it was so hopeless I didn't connect to the characters as much either as I wanted to and I don't know what it is I don't know if it's a writing style I don't know um, but I think I'm going to give this one two stars because while I respect the like the what it's talking about the content and all of that I did not like it I didn't think the writing was exceptional and it's it can't be a three star because a three star means that I am just kind of ambivalent about it and I definitely have a negative feeling towards this <laughs> so I have to give it two stars so yeah there we have it we have a 3.5 star and a two star book that I read Kayla I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry, I really thought I was gonna love these. You know, I'm having fun kind of exploring my taste, reaching out and finding kind of different works that I think could work for me. And I'm glad I read these and I'm glad I know where I stand with both of these. I would read more from Kate Folk. I don't know that I would read more from Sequoia Nagamatsu. I feel like I have very similar taste in a lot of ways to Kayla, but also very different at the same time. 
So this is just kind of an interesting experiment to find out if we click with this kind of book. And I think she really loved Sea of Tranquility too, which is interesting because I love that one. I have a fun time trying to figure out where tastes align and differ and ours differ with these two. Maybe not so much with this one, but definitely with this one. I think this, if it had been just one story would have been incredible. That's it for me today. Don't forget to check down below in the description if you want to find other ways to contact me in other social medias. I will link Kayla's channel down there as well if somehow you don't know who she is from Books and Lala. Go follow her. She's amazing. And that's going to be it for me today. Y'all don't forget that life is short. So read Riley. Cheers and goodbye.